Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello, welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions in the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, and hockey. And I'm really excited. I was talking to him before we started. I mean, this is this interview is like almost a year or two in the making, but we're talking to Chicago Blackhawks forward Matthew Highmore. Matthew, welcome to Pop Turnative. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's uh, like you said, it's been a, a while in the making, but uh, looking forward to it. No, absolutely. So, pretty crazy story. Uh, you know, you you play um, as many years as you could in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. You get invited to several pro camps, including, you know, the Montreal Canadiens early on, and have an unbelievable, like, final year in the QMJHL, signed to the Chicago Blackhawks, get to play in the AHL, <laughs> become an all-star, and then end, um, end with the Chicago Blackhawks, play 13 games. I mean, just crazy ride man yeah you know what uh you know when you when you first get drafted in the queue you don't uh you, know, you think everything goes kind of uh in a straightforward line and um you know the hockey world world's um you know it's kind of a different world and um you've got to go through a lot of ups and downs and uh like you said crazy ride it's been uh you know you, you learn lots throughout um but yeah well worth well worth the wait and it's been so much fun here in the, the last couple of years, especially in St. John, too. We have to talk about that team, though. The last year where you were the President Cup champions, that team was unbelievable. I mean, you know, you, I, I spoke to a bunch of you guys and you said, you know, the bonds in the room were amazing. But just the chemistry on the ice is unbelievable. I mean, Boko, like Boko got 41 goals that season. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's yeah. just amazing. I feel like that year really kind of fueled a lot of you guys and really elevated your game. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, you know, we had so many good players on that team, like you said. Um, you know, we pushed each other so much each day. And I think the love of coming to the rink, um, you know, enjoying being around each other really, really pushed us all on. And, um, you know, a lot of us have, have moved on now and, um, but it's been uh, it, it was so much fun. You can't you can't describe it because I know everybody says it, you know. But it was a great group of guys, and and you know to be successful um, team wise, you have to have a great group, and uh, we certainly did. Absolutely. And talk a little bit about. I mean, I know there's a lot you could say, but you know, got to play uh, in the American Hockey League this year and um, some games in the NHL. What were kind of some of the biggest changes? Obviously, the it's a bigger game, it's a faster game. But was there anything else that w that you were like um, surprised about in terms of the transition from uh, junior to pro? You know, it's just it's just a different lifestyle. Um, you know, the hockey obviously bigger, faster, stronger, but. Um, you know, it's, it's a different lifestyle. Uh, you know, you, you're going from you know, not living with billet families anymore. You're living on your own. Um, you know, have to cook for yourself, clean. It's, it's just all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, you're, you're fending for yourself kind of uh, out in the real world, I guess you, I guess you could say. But, um, you know, it, it's a, it, it was a change and, and whatnot. But I was, I was very lucky to have uh, Nathan Noel, one of my teammates in St. John, with me. And, uh, that kind of made the tra transition a lot easier. Absolutely, and you see it in the you you see it in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League because I remember talking to Trevor George and he said that you know certain trades were made because like so for when you guys were like on route for the President Cup the trade deadline certain trades were made because they wanted more chemistry in the ball uh, in, in the um, in the room you know like Callum Booth came over because he knew a few players from camp they brought Julian Gauthier over David Como knew a bunch of guys as well so there's that aspect of it do you think that's around in pro hockey a little bit too because you mentioned like, you know the whole Nathan Noel Matthew Highmore thing like you guys signed pretty close like pretty close time yeah, you know what, I think it, it, it's one of those things that, you know, if you have chemistry with somebody or, you know, you're friends with somebody, you're you're most likely to play better, to have a better time. Um, you know, we certainly did that in St. John. Uh, you're probably seeing it more and more um, in pro hockey, uh, you know, players having more of a, an influence on, um, 
you know, certain players coming in and coming out. And, um, you know, it's so important in this day and age that you, you have to, you have to know um, and trust the guy, guy sitting, you know, 10 feet from you or right beside you. So it's, uh, you know, like you said, Luther and, and those guys came over and, um, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of guys that knew them and uh, they were great additions. For sure. There, there's going to be a lot of things that you know you're going to tweak, and every day is going to be kind of a learning experience for yourself. But what were kind of some of the things that you really worked on to get to the next level, to to like get that opportunity to play in the AHL and be such a prominent player for the Ice Hawks this year? Like, what what did you kind of work on specifically that you said I need to do this in order to play in the American Hockey League? Um, you know, I think for me, uh, it was always the biggest thing for me was consistency. And being able to day in and day out, um, be consistent at, you know, not necessarily just playing well, but, but the little things. And in hockey, you know, the little things are so important. It's, it's the difference between um, winning and losing. So, I mean, that was, that was kind of something I, I sat down a couple of years ago and, and really, really focused on. And, um, you know, my coach in St. John, Danny Flynn, really, really helped me with that. Um, you know, I can't say enough about him. He uh, he definitely pushed the details, and um, you know, I I probably wouldn't be where I am today without uh, without him for sure. No, absolutely. Um, what were some of the goals that you? I mean, obviously, I'm sure one of the goals was just to kind of have a great first year wherever you kind of played. I mean, it, it's like the first year is always going to be the toughest one. But, I mean, you know, the fact that you got to play in the National Hockey League in your first, like, pro year, what was what like, what like was going through your mind when you got the call? Like, what, like, take us through that day. I'm sure it must have been overwhelming. Yeah, you know, it's actually kind of a crazy story, too. It's, uh, so it was a day before my birthday, and, um... You know, we're my mom's in town because she's celebrating with us and or with me, and uh, I'm actually heading to the to the grocery store. So we're on our way to the grocery store, and um, I get the call and, um, from Mark Bernard, one of the uh, you know he's kind of the GM of our AHL team in Rockford. And, uh, got the call and it was uh, it was very very surreal. Um, you know, so many emotions kind of go through you and whatnot, and um, especially have my mom there too, which was kind of cool. Um, you know, she, she was, she was very happy and, um, yeah, it's, it, it's a great, it, it's honestly crazy because it's not something, you know, you, you'd really, uh, expect in your first year, but, uh, very honored to be able to do it. Getting the opportunity kind of to be in the room and play with guys, some like elite hockey players like Jonathan Taze and Patrick Kane, I guess just being around them, um, is a learning experience in its own, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, you learn things from those guys every single day um you know first and foremost they're just great great guys um you know very very down to earth and um I've learned a ton from them you know just just the way they carry themselves to um, the way they approach different situations uh it's a complete learning experience and um you know they were they were very very welcoming and uh, i can't thank them enough for that mm -hmm. now it's kind of funny because I remember St. John in the QMJHL draft, we were kind of talking and, you know, you signed, but, you know, before you signed, you you were kind of making some backup plans and that I believe included you were starting your own fit, like your own fitness company, right? Your own gym? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So my question here is, I'm really excited to talk to you about this because definitely because you've done that stuff um, and you're really like passionate about fitness and um, going to the gym. I find it very interesting that you even look at, you know, uh, the CHL, you know, the Q, the OHL, you have these players that are like six, 16 and 17 and people are talking about them, Matthew, and they're saying they have an elite shot, an NHL ready shot. They have an NHL ready stride, right? So what are some of the things like off ice training or on ice training that you're kind of noticing that is allowing these players to excel quickly and develop those strong elements early on. Like it's crazy. They might not be ready for the NHL, but some guys are like already have NHL speed. They already have NHL shot. It's nuts. It, it, it's crazy. Um, you know, I don't think that at my like my age group, I don't think we saw as much of that. But it, you know, over the last couple of years, it, it, it is crazy and. You know, I don't know if you can if you can pinpoint you know one reason why 
or how they they're able to create it it's it's obviously it's obviously hard work and and whatnot but you know kids these days have so many so many t- tools at their disposal um you know whether it be um you know a, a skating coach a shooting coach there's uh there's so many different tools and it's not like we didn't have that you know six seven years ago mm-hmm. but it's just so much more prominent now and you know everybody's doing it so why doesn't you know why if everybody's doing it then you have to do it to keep up so um I mean, I think that that's kind of the biggest thing. And, you know, kids these days travel across halfway across North America to see a shooting coach for a week. You know what I mean? It's nuts. The players that are developing, like, I, like you know, the oh, like watching, like, HEO AAA in the Ottawa area, like, the O2s, man. Like, it's <laughs> insane. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. No, I mean, they, it's, you know, it, it's all for the love of the game, too, which is which is very important. You know, it's, you know, if you don't love the game, it, it's not worth it. And, um you know, these kids coming up, they, they continue to push the limits, and it's impressive, man. Speaking of pushing the limits, it has to be mentioned, you are an undrafted National Hockey League player. <laughs> and that is important, man, because, you know, people, like, want to get drafted, they want to make it, but you're kind of the example, like the poster boy almost, for, like, hard work and just doing it and just kind of... Um, kind of break breaking this like breaking the barriers in terms of you know having to get drafted like that's not a thing i was reading some stats and there's a very big amount uh percentage of unsigned uh, undrafted yeah. nhlers in the in the league so that that's important too and I, I think it gives a lot of kids confidence like that maybe don't get drafted that there is time and you can make something out of it right oh absolutely i mean i think you know after i didn't get drafted it, you know it was a tough time because absolutely. everybody's sitting there saying hey you know, the draft is the end all be all, you know, it's the only way you're going to get there. And, um, but it's not, remember. it's not though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, I mean, in this day and age, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it does for, you know, maybe somebody's psyche or, or whatnot, but you know, if, if you want to get there, you can get there. And, you know, somebody that really um, kind of opened my eyes to it was watching Tyler Johnson, uh, who plays in Tampa there mm-hmm. um, a couple of years ago. Uh, I think Three years ago, they maybe were in the finals. Three, yeah. four years ago, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what opened my eyes. I was like, "Oh, this, you know, this guy got there without being drafted, so so why can't I?" Kind of thing. And Absolutely, I think that it's important for all kids to understand that. For sure. What were what are some of the things that you kind of take pride in, in terms of your game that you think kind of allowed you to kind of stand out and allowed you to kind of get signed by the Chicago Blackhawks? Was it you know uh, the fact that you have the size, a little bit of the speed? You're kind of a player that's able to make some plays, but you know you don't you're not afraid to also like get a puck to the net, get in there, kind of dig. What were some of the elements of your game that you've been kind of praised or recognized for? Yeah, well, I think. First and foremost, you know, for me, my skating's always been one of those one of those attributes that I look at. And I'm like, okay, you know, like I, I have to use this to my advantage, and um, you know, people have recognized that as well. And um, but but beyond that, I mean, I think being being a versatile player in this day and age, you know, everybody wants to be a two way player, uh, you know, play offense, defense. Um, but you, there's there's no time in the game anymore to to just be an offensive player. So for me, I mean. Um, you know, focusing on any kind of team team needs that a team need or that a team needs to win, you know, is what I try to focus on. And um, you know, if you can play both ends of the ice, you can always find a find a you know a roster spot on a team. For sure, I find it really interesting too. And you're obviously gonna agree with what I'm gonna say because you're actually like an example of this. But you know, you have players that you know in jun- like junior and pro is are completely different it's no like it there's no it's completely different you know if you have if you're amazing in the in the quebec mirror junior hockey league point wise doesn't guarantee that you're you know you're gonna go get pro, to the pro level however this is just my opinion and you're the type of player example because you put up 89 points your last season if you prove that you can score and get a lot of points and be productive like the way you guys were or guys like you know barry boulet um you they sh- you should get a chance at at least maybe you know in, in the ECHL or the AHL because you you've proven that you can be an elite scorer at some level. Do you kind of agree with that? Do you think that there's kind of that th- does that kind of exist? Do you think like um, pro teams are kind of 
realizing that you're seeing it more and more. You know, you get signed. Alex Barre, Barry Boulay just got signed to Tampa. Ale, yeah. Alexander Ale, who had an s- unbelievable season with the um, Armada, signed with the Montreal Canadiens, I believe. What do you think yeah. about that? Yeah, I mean, like like you said, if you can score at one level, um, it doesn't necessarily translate uh, to the next. But you absolutely should be, should be given an opportunity. And I mean, um, it, it, it's it's tough to say too because a lot of teams look for a lot of different things, and you know maybe one year teams aren't looking for um, the scorers. But it is you know if you can score in the queue, and the queue is you know a very very good league. It's no uh, no slouch and. Um, you've seen that over the years. You know, Bathurst won this year, uh, won the Memorial Cup. Um, you know, they're 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 a great team. So I mean, I think no matter what league you're in, if you can score, scoring's a you know it's it's a it's a talent. You know, it's it's tough. And if you can score, who knows? You know, maybe at the next level you can, maybe you can't. But you know, you definitely deserve a chance. A lot of people are also talking about you know the AHL being. Uh, like, like very, like I, I find this interesting. So you played in the AHL and the NHL. I mean, I've talked to some pe- players, and they say that, so, like, because everyone is going like 120 percent the AHL, that the AHL might be a harder league to play in than the NHL. Is that true? Kind of. I, I know exactly where you're going with that that uh, question, but yeah, no, 100 <laughs> percent, absolutely, without a doubt. You know, the AHL, it's uh, it's a grind. <laughs> Just guys are out there, um, you know, guys are playing for the livelihoods. Um, you know, it's the same in the NHL, but, you know, these guys are the, the best players in the world in the NHL. And, you know, they're, they're going to make plays in tight areas. And, you know, maybe you're not going to get hit in a certain spot. But, I mean, the NHL, or in the AHL, guys are out there to, you know, to beat you up, to, to win, <laughs> to, you know, it, it's hard to describe. But it's, it's a war out there is basically what it is. Absolutely. Um, I think we'll wrap up. But before, I just wanted to um, just ask you, what are what some of the takeaways from this year? What are kind of some of the goals that you want to achieve next season? And how are you going to get there? Yeah, you know what? You know, takeaways from this year, um, obviously, the fact that, you know, very pri- privileged to play those 13 games in, in the NHL and, um, you know, help help my AHL team, you know, uh, we got to the conference finals there and had a good year, but um, moving on, obviously not satisfied with that. And, um, this summer, we're going to start to go back to work here um, in a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, looking forward to the season. I think uh, everybody over the summer always wants to get stronger and, and do that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I'm very, very, very motivated. And, um, you know, I'm going to look at my nutrition over the summer and do just kind of little things to, you know, any little thing that can make me, uh, push me over the top and uh, looking forward to, to the season come start of September. Absolutely. Well, Maddie, thank you so much for finally coming on the show. I mean, it, it, like I said, you have such a great story, man. So it, it's just congrats for all your success and I wish you all the best in the future as well, man. Yeah, no, you know what? Thank you for having me. I know it's been, been a while in the making, but uh, great talking to you and I appreciate it. Absolutely. Where can people follow you on social media? Uh, my Instagram is uh, mhighmore15. And uh, my Twitter handle is, is mhighmore15 as well. Perfect. Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turnative. You can catch previous episodes of Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash Pop Turnative for the video episodes. If you don't want to watch this, you can listen to it on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts. That's where we are. Popturnative.com for brand new content as well. Until next time, this is Matthew Highmore and PD Beats. Sign it off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.